Jeremiah? Jeremiah! Wake up! Wake up, Jeremiah! Don't you remember what day it is? Leave for Jerusalem immediately. I was waiting outside. King promises of Passover they will remember throughout the ages. <laughs> Do you know why today will be so memorable? We're celebrating the restoration of Solomon's temple. King Josiah finding the laws of Moses. Think of it. The laws of our people lost for a hundred years. Father! And the king finds them. Gives them once again to the people. It is as if God himself is giving us a second chance. It's a great honor for your father to perform the sacrifice at the temple on this day of all days. As a descendant of Aaron, Cohen, a priest, it will be your turn to have such an honor one day too. Jeremiah, stay close to us. Mother, I'm not going to get lost. Beauty of these gates, Jeremiah. Jerusalem is the glory of our people and the light for all the inhabitants of the earth. No one can destroy this city, son. The Lord dwells in it. I want to show Jeremiah the inside of the temple. I'll find a place in front. See the stairs at the back. They lead up to the Holy of Holies. You're standing only a few meters from the actual stones that God's own finger touched to write his commandments. They are the testimony of the covenant between God and his people. We must abide by his law if we wish to remain free. I will teach my children his laws. They, in turn, shall teach their children, Jeremiah. That is the covenant.
you see? Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I consecrated you. You are a prophet. You will speak to whom I send you, Jeremiah, and you will speak whatever I command you. Oh Lord, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a boy. Do not say I am only a boy. Now I have put my words into your mouth. Today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms. Do not fear them, for I am with you to deliver you. But I am only a boy. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, wake up. You were dreaming. Dreaming? Crying out in the night. I'm only a boy, you were shouting. the Egyptians. Now, there is nothing left to oppose your power. Now, the world is mine. Let's go get what the gods have given to Babylon. This commandment I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, but the word is in thy mouth and in thy heart. Thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Thou wilt turn unto him with all thine heart and with all thy soul. The Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. As it was spoken, so shall it be according to the word of the Lord found by our beloved King Josiah. May he rest in peace. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. May God be with you, my Lord. I'm with you, my boys. Tonight begins the Lord's day. The day after the Sabbath begins yours. What do you mean, Father? We go to Jerusalem. I've arranged a great honor for you. Come. Your mother has prepared a feast to celebrate the Sabbath. Join us, Ethan. Uh, thank you, but my family is waiting for me. What is this honor, Father? You both have helped me well in the past in preparing the ritual offering. In two days' time, you will each perform your own. You have an opportunity to put your priesthood into practice for the first time at the altar in the temple of Jerusalem. For whom will you be making this offering? The Lord. Of course. I meant on whose behalf. Let that be a secret until tomorrow. It should be enough to say it will not be a sandal maker or a shepherd. Again, haven't you? No. I was. You know it's proper to announce yourself for making a visit. No. I wish I had half the boldness you have. That's why you make such a good couple. You can rely upon my boldness, and I can rely upon your sweetness. I'm going to perform my first offering at the temple in Jerusalem. Oh, come and tell my father. He'd be so proud. No, no. I, I promised my father I'd be home before sunset. But you had to see me, huh? But I had to see him. I'm late. Come back later. Yes. Yeah. And next time, let me know when you get here. <laughs> Blessed is the Lord 
were sanctified the day of the Sabbath. To our Lord and the King of Judah. At least King Josiah stood up to the Egyptians at Megiddo. God rest his soul. Now his son, Jehoiakim, lays down for them. Babylon arms itself on one side and Egypt on the other. Instead of taking action, we spend our time glorifying the past without consideration for the future. We'll be crushed again. Judah must remain independent. It is the Sabbath. God rested on this day, and we not as well. Father, I'd like to take a bride. Does this bride have a name? Judith. <laughs> so that's why you were late. Yes. Judith comes from a fine family, my son. You have my blessing if you seek it. Speak to Judith's father and seek his. And then we can all celebrate. Our son has an announcement to make. I want to give you a chance. I will pay the debt in your place, but I want your daughter in return. I prefer slavery a hundred times over. Think about it, old man. Slavery for you and your entire family. Get out. Let's see how proud you are when you are cleaning Isa's floor with your tongue. Get out. The king has expressed his judgment. I will help Judah's family pay their debt. And I will marry her. Now, surely you must have friends who can help. Of course. You will contact whoever is necessary. Understand, my son, that if, and I said if, things do not turn out as we would hope for Judith and her family, according to the law, debtors will only have to serve seven years. Seven years? Yes, seven years. For those to whom they are in debt, and then they shall go free. You're not suggesting this will happen. I leave it to the prophets to foretell the future. I can only say what is happening today. And today, my son must prepare himself for the most important moment in his life, his first sacrifice for the one true God in Jerusalem. Jeremiah, what do you see? I see an almond tree. What is its season? It's ready to sprout. You have seen well, as this tree is in a hurry to sprout, so God is in a hurry to carry out his word. It is time for you to speak. Stand and tell them everything as I command. Who are you? It is time, Jeremiah. 
No. Leave me be. Just a simple man. It is time. We will remain in the city until tomorrow in the temple. Today it is Ephraim's turn. Tomorrow it will be yours. But I want you to observe today's sacrifice so that tomorrow you'll be more prepared. Are you going to tell us now, my lord, what great people we will serve? All I can say is there will be people of consequence at the temple. Spices for everybody! We're going to hear the king's judgment. I want to make sure everything goes well for Judith and her family. I'll be waiting for you at the temple. My son, it's very important to me that you should be properly prepared to offer the sacrifice tomorrow. Please don't be late. I understand, Father. Prepare well, your friend. You will need it. I'll come with you. God knows you need protection. Don't worry, my lord. We'll be back in time. This is a time of great prosperity for our people. A prosperity that comes as a consequence of the trust between those engaged in any transaction. A simple trust that what is borrowed will be replaced. When that trust is violated, the prosperity of our people is threatened. He who violates that trust must be punished. It is our judgment that Eliakim, in refusing to pay his debt, should surrender his property and rights. And both Eliakim and his family will henceforward serve and be subject to the demands of Ezer, his creditor. No. Come now. Come, Jeremiah. We must get to the temple. Yes, I'll meet you there. First, I must speak with Judas' father. I'm very strong. Do you have relatives here? Yeah, my father's cousin. They travel from Baudim to show us their support. You must flee. She must go with them at once. They need my help, especially now. Take Judith with you to your home. If you hurry, you can get her out of Jerusalem now. We have enough difficulties. Please, Judith. The laws of God will protect you. God be willing. They may not hold enough weight in this world to protect Judith. There are those who will seize upon your misfortune and turn it to their advantage with Judith as their prize. How do you know this? You must trust me. Father? Judith. I must fulfill my father's wishes at the temple. I cannot let him down. Nor will I let you down. You must go. Come along. Come along. Into the car. Leave me. All right. Oh, all right. Get away. Get away. Oh, no. Go on. 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 Go on has chosen us as his people. That is why we gather at this temple of the Lord. Yeah. 
Jeremiah, you have seen well. For my people are foolish. They are skilled in doing evil. But how to do good, they know not. Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. You will speak for me, Jeremiah. Father, 
Ko je kim? Natanaya. All of you! Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. Temple of the Lord. For if you truly execute justice, one with another, and if you do not oppress the alien, or shed innocent blood in this place, I will let you dwell in this place. In the land I gave of old to your fathers forever. You trust in deceptive words to no avail. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense the Baal, and go after other gods that you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name and say we are delivered! only to go on committing all these abominations. Behold, I myself have seen it, says the Lord. He has prophesied. Hilkaya, you spoke well of this boy, but to us it looks like he is beside himself with emotion. You served us well and you may return, but I do not want to see your son here again. Understood. Name of the Lord, or you will die. Do not blaspheme again. You made quite an impression yesterday. I guess I did. I told you I should have been the one serving the king. You'd have been wiser. You're leaving? Yes. What can I do? Look after my parents for me. And keep your heart as open as that scheming brain of yours. Ephraim. I'm hearing these voices. 
in these dreams. I think God himself is calling me to say these things. To do these things. When I was at the altar in Jerusalem, in front of the king, I felt this fire in me, as if God himself was speaking through me. I, I don't know how else these words could have come. Doesn't matter. Whatever has happened has led me to do what you urged me to do. Take Judith as my wife. And for that, I thank you, my friend. Go with God. Carefully, Jeremiah. What do you see? An overturned pot. In what direction? From north to south. Out of the north, evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. And I will utter my judgments against all the cities of Judah for all their wickedness in forsaking me. Please, Lord, leave me be. Say to them everything that I command you. They shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you to deliver you. Not me, Lord. Not me. I served you in Jerusalem. Please. Now I beg you, let me go my own way. You shall not take a wife, nor shall you have sons or daughters. What? Why? For all the children and the mothers shall die a grievous death in this land, because their fathers have not kept my law. Lord, you cannot burden me with this! Go and proclaim it in the hearing of Jerusalem. Do not ask me to return to Jerusalem. They will stone me. The king will have me banished. Give me a sign, Lord, please. So they, so they will believe me. Do not make me do this alone. Jeremiah, I'm Baruch. 
The scribe at the temple. I heard you were going to Baharim. I had to find you. I heard you speak. Those words were not your own. No one can speak like that unless they're inspired by God. You are a prophet, and I want to stay with you. I'm tired of the hypocrisy in Jerusalem. <laughs> It will be a hard life, Baruch. The Lord has ordered me back to Jerusalem. To risk your life? To proclaim his word. If we can get the king in the whole house of Judah to listen, he will forgive them. Come. What have you brought? My scrolls. Let's write God's words. You'll read them in the temple in Jerusalem. This saith the Lord, execute me judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. And do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place. For if ye do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this house kings sitting upon the throne of David. But if ye will not hear these words, I swear by myself, saith the Lord, that the king of Babylon shall come, and he shall destroy this country. This is an outrage. We must speak to the king. What is your name? Baruch. Jeremiah dictated these words to you. Yes. Baruch, we believe that God has spoken to Jeremiah. We want you to give us the scroll so that we may read it to the king and convince him Jeremiah speaks the truth. But you must understand, if we fail, there are those who will want Jeremiah killed. And maybe you too. He said the king of Babylon will come and destroy us. He said this would come to pass only if we didn't mend our ways, in the eyes of the Lord. Let me see this document he was reading. Do you realize what he said? The king of Babylon shall destroy this country? That's treason! As long as the Egyptians protect us, it will be very difficult for that to happen. Brother, with the Babylonians threatening, our people need to be reminded of their strengths. And Hilkiah's son is Jeremiah. Claims to speak for the Lord. A prophet. My Lord! We must go. They didn't listen. The king burned the scroll. We must try again. Do you know what that would mean? Lord, today is with me. With us. He will deliver us. How can you be sure? Oh, my God. 
Say your prayers at your uncle's bedside. Go comfort your cousin. Yes, Father. The people of Judah need your help. Jehoiakim is far too ill to deal with the Babylonians. Do you think the people would have me as their king? If not you, who? Jehoiakim, your brother's son. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar might just as well proclaim himself as king of Judah. My brother was born to be king. I never thought he would go so soon. It is a man's willingness to answer God's calling that tests the man. I will send an embassy of submission to King Nebuchadnezzar. And you must persuade your brother's son to turn himself in, along with his mother and all those of his family, to save the city. The Babylonians will deport them. And they will surely proclaim you as the new king of Judah. Only after the old one spirit departs us. Sorry to hear about your father's death. You have been wise to turn yourself over to me. You will benefit from this. You will be my lifelong guest at the court in Babylon. Now, Metaniah. Thank you for your gifts and for the service you've done me. You are the new king of Judah. Your name will be Zedekiah. Of course, to maintain our favor, my ministers will determine the gold tribute. We will expect as an expression of your friendship each year. One more thing. I will take Jehoiakim's King's ministers with me to Babylon, together with many of the authorities of Jerusalem, with the exception of those you choose to help you govern the city. In exchange for that service, we will expect another sign of friendship. Wisely, my king. Peace has been restored to the kingdom of Judah. The Babylonians did not destroy our city. Exactly. See, you don't have to listen to this man to think of themselves as prophets. Perhaps the new king will listen. 
King Zedekiah should feel secure now. It should be safe for us to go. I will go alone. Oh, why? Because it is my turn to take the risk, and I don't want both of us to suffer the same fate at the same time. King, the tribute to Babylon is madness. Our only hope, the only hope for your people, is with Egypt. No! My lord, don't you realize Egypt is finished? The whole world is in the hands of the king of Babylon. I think we should send ambassadors to beg for mercy and to reduce the tribute. Forget the tribute, my lord. If you want to be free, you must join with Egypt. Nebuchadnezzar is far away again. He will not ask for tribute. He'll accept some territory where he can put up a garrison. I think we will cease paying tribute to Babylon. Babylon we can take advantage of the fact that Babylon thinks we're its ally. Tomorrow, I will send an ambassador to the Pharaoh to sound out whether they would help us. So now you are party with Egypt. Well, we have to see if it's less risky to trust Egypt or Babylon. You want to be free? Never mind about Egypt or Babylon. Turn to God. <laughs> Who are you? It is Hilkiah's son. Oh. So you are the false prophet I've been hearing about. My name is Jeremiah, and I speak only the truth as God shows it to me. And God demands you make a fool of yourself in front of this court. To show that you must accept the supremacy of Babylon, or Jerusalem will be destroyed. The yoke of slavery is upon you, and you must concede. I could kill you where you stand for this message of treason. Thus says the Lord. For lo, I am calling all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, and I will utter my judgments against all the cities of Judah for all their wickedness in forsaking me. The army of Babylon approaches to carry out God's plan. Your army stands ready, my king. Egypt is strong again and will join our battle. If you would turn to God instead of your generals, you would hear him say, deceive not yourselves. Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt, and Babylon shall come again and fight against this city and take it and burn it. Vex blasphemy! God has turned his face against this city, and he shall destroy it with fire unless you repent! <laughs> I am Hananiah! The Lord says, this is how I will break the yoke of Babylon! <laughs> This is how I will break the yoke of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon from the neck of all nations within two years. God has spoken through his prophet, Hananiah. <laughs> You have broken wooden bars, only to forge iron bars in place of them. <laughs> you have made these people trust in a lie. Within a year, you will be dead. What? He has blasphemed! Blasphemer! And you! You will be a slave. Thus says the Lord, Behold. Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, 
unspeakably evil I have pronounced against them. Because I have spoken to them, and they have not listened. I have called to them, and they have not answered. Five days away. There's no time to waste. Spread the word. When our army arrives, everyone must go out and surrender to them. It is God's will. Surrender to him. And their lives will be saved. What can I do for you, Jeremiah? Be careful. It appears our pleas fall on deaf ears and hardened hearts. Hardened heart can become a dangerous weapon. He said it would come to pass in task. The Egyptians are mounting a counterattack that will deter the Babylonians. But Jeremiah's words inflame the people with false concerns. All of what you say is based on your belief that Jeremiah is a false prophet. But if you are wrong, why would God send a prophet from the wilderness when you are surrounded by school priests? Why would he destroy his own people? Why would he accuse you of injustices? Elishama, you believe this man, do you not? I remain unsure, Your Majesty. But there is a growing number of citizens who don't share my doubts. My king. You have a mighty army, but you must not fight the Babylonians. It is Jeremiah's prophecy. You must lay down your swords. You must open your hearts to Babylon. For only by surrender can we implement God's will. God finds my rule unjust, then I must act to beg his mercy. I am declaring all the slaves of Israel free as of this moment. Your Majesty is making a grave mistake. Many people depend upon the slaves to... I did not ask for your opinion, General Shafan. It shall be done, and it shall be done immediately. If the army of Babylon arrives, God shall find an Israel without slaves. Do you understand? finally makes the decision, and this is the decision he makes. A guard reports the king freed Jeremiah this morning. What? He has shaken the king's confidence. Imagine what he can do to our country. The prophet does not work for, for God. 
He works for Babylon. Freed the slaves. You're free to return to your family, your home. <laughs> but what prompted this change of heart? That is between God and the king. There are those who would say it's because of your preaching. You see, your words have even reached us here in Bahurim. We will leave tomorrow, first thing in the morning. I'm afraid. I'm afraid I can't go with you. Why? I don't mean to doubt your concerns in any way, but... If you go to the king, tell him your mission is fulfilled. God, I serve the king. Maya, you have implemented God's will. The king has freed the slave. Judy, this must make a difference. All of Judah will celebrate. And those who seek your harm now will have no cause to do so. Come to his senses. 
has reversed his decision about slavery. Because Babylon has turned back. They will return! Do not interfere, Jeremiah. The king has served his God. Now he has to serve his people. He has always shown a particular interest in the water and in life. I think he'll be glad when he hears he has been kind enough to bring her to three or four months, perhaps as much as a year. It will give us time to appeal to the Pharaoh. The great Nebuchadnezzar will be satisfied with some territory where they can put up a garrison. I must ask you if you have any word from the Lord. Speak! Don't test my patience. What have I done to offend you that would cause you to put me in prisons? You said things that caused rancor among my people. I spoke the truth. Where are your prophets now who said Babylon will not come against you or this land? I have not called you here to condemn me. I have called you here to speak to me of God's will. I have nothing further to say. What? You? 
who predicted the Egyptians would turn back, and they did. You, who predicted the death of Hananiah after he smashed the yoke from your neck and who died within the year, just as you said. You, who prophesied the Babylonian army would attack, and now they lay siege to our city as they have done for the last two years. You, the great prophet, have nothing further to say? I had an opportunity to please the Lord. But you didn't have the courage to stand by what you knew to be true. What? Oh, forgive me, oh Lord. Is that all you have left? The ability to grovel at the feet of your king. If you want answers, Turn to God. God! Take this man, this prophet. Out of my sight, go, leave. city into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And the Babylonians shall set fire to this place, for the children of Israel have turned unto me their back. This man must die. No! He is a prophet, my lord. He is a traitor, my lord. Traitors die. Is there nothing else to talk about other than this prophet? What about the defense of Jerusalem? This concerns the defense of our city, Lord King. He depresses the soldiers left within the city walls more desert every night. There was a time when I valued your counsel, General Shafan. I know, my lord. Who will you choose to hold off the Babylonians who threaten our city from without? Discontent amongst our people from within. Do not give the people any cause to act foolishly, my lord. And I will gather them out of all the countries whither I have driven them in mine anger. And I will bring them again into this place. And I will cause them to dwell safe. Make way, make way. Move aside. You, come with me. And I will make everlasting covenant with them, and they shall be my people. Speak this treason no more. I say it, the Lord. Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall die by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold that. God has promised that you shall keep your life if you go out to the Babylonians. It is not treason to follow the will of God. It is sin not to obey your God now. Anyone else found attempting to surrender? will be killed.
Preach what you want down there. Prophet. Your Majesty. Yes, what is it? It's about the prophet Jeremiah. What? Even here? Who are you? I am Abed Melech, a lowly eunuch, Your Majesty. Abed Melech? Means servant to the king. I serve you gladly, my lord. You are one of the few who do. What do you know of Jeremiah? I followed the general and his men. They lowered Jeremiah into the cistern. He will die there. Good. If he dies, the wrath of God will come upon us. Has it not already? I could have you beheaded, yet you persist. Why? How is it that you, my eunuch, hear the voice of God to confirm your faith in this man, while I, King of Judah, implore the Lord for a sign? One word! Yet hear nothing. Pull him up. Have him taken to the court of the guard. You tell no one of this conversation, or you will die. Jeremiah, are you all right? Yes. audience, but it'll be your last. What is of such importance that you risk your life to see me? Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord which I speak unto thee, and your life will be saved, and the city will not be burned. So now you're speaking for the Lord again. Well, never mind, our armies are prepared. How can you continue to lie to yourself as well as your people? Truth is in the eye of the beholder. The word of the Lord which I speak to thee is the truth. The word of the Lord which you ask me to seek is silence! If God has something to say to me, why does he send you to tell me? Why would the Lord speak to you unless you've committed your life to him? I have. Instead of erecting monuments to false gods, make your life a living monument to the word of God. It is as my people desire. You are king. They look to you for leadership. Your pursuit of your own pleasure, wealth, and power have taught the people to trust in false gods. You have led them to believe that the one true God is not enough. You have destroyed the kingdom God has promised! You 
have not attended to them. So God will attend to you for your evil. Save me, Jeremiah. I cannot. God will if you surrender to Babylon. My people will turn on me. If I do, they'll kill me. No, no, that will not happen. You will live. But as a slave, I will never live as a slave. You are a slave, even now. Take him back to his cell. Yes, my lord. Come. See that he's not harmed! Jeremiah, you called for us. For you to witness a business transaction. The city is under siege and starving, and you're making business transactions? This is Hanamel, my cousin. I had a dream God told me to say by my field that is at Anathoth. Buy it for yourself, Jeremiah. You preach that the city is about to fall and yet you buy land as if nothing is happening. Thus saith the Lord. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them. And behold, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. But this one I shall write in their hearts, and I shall be their God, and they shall be my people. <laughs> have been breached, we must flee. Bring my sons. Thank you. 
You do not bow to your conqueror? We bow only for the one true God. Your God put you here. So, in order to please your God, for I do not wish to anger any God, no matter how minor, I sentence you to death. I'm sure that's what your God wants. Do you have any final words? You have to speak up. We do things quickly here. I understand there has been a prophet in your country who told you this would come to pass. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, yes. That's the one. What did he say of your future? He said I would not die by your hand. He did. Well, you must keep your life then. Mustn't we? And who are those handsome young men who tried to escape with you? My sons. This is the last thing you will ever see. Alive, as your God told you. Union soldiers know of Jeremiah. My king, Nebuchadnezzar, has commanded me to set you free. Free.
shall be rebuilt. And next time it shall also be built in the hearts of man.